In this screencast, we're going to install the Community Commons module and take a look at what it offers. To find the module, you can click on uh, App Store. You'll see Community Commons Function Library shows as one of the most popular uh, modules. Otherwise, if you're looking for something, you can type a search in Community. All right, let's see if and you see here it is. Okay, so if we click, you'll get screenshots, you'll get documentation. It's usually good to take a look at the documentation. I find sometimes looking at it from within the desktop modeler is not ideal, so you can also go to it in, in the actual uh, browser, and there sometimes so it's slightly easier to read view. So if we take a look here, we see a, a description of what it is, and we see some uh, documentation. If you click on documentation, you'll usually find an overview and also some uh, information about what you need to uh, do in order to install something. Um, sometimes this will have important information about dependencies, uh, other modules you need to install, and so forth. In this case, I mean, this is a rather technical discussion, but it turns out because we're installing it for the first time, we won't need to make uh, address any of these things. The usage here is going to describe detailed information about all the different functions and what they do. So we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Right now, we're going to go install it. So I'm going to go back here. And we in this uh, view, we have a download button. I click download. And if this is the first time I'm installing something, which it is, you want to generally leave the name as it is, and you want to add it as a new module. So I import it, and then it's successfully been added. To find it, I go up under Project, right? So if Project is closed, I want to open that up. And then I go to App Store Modules, and here we'll see Community Commons. And if you click, you can kind of browse through and see various things that are in here. You'll notice, and we haven't been doing this in our own project, but you can add folders to group things together. So you'll see there are various kinds of functions that have been added. Now, um, with, with many of the modules we're going to look at, it's going to be really clear what you do immediately. There's some page you add or so forth. In this case, this is just covering the gamut of things. There are, and, and I will go back to the list of functions here, the main point of Community Commons is just to give you a whole slew of uh, functions that you can include in your, in your microflows. And some of these I'm not even going to uh, explain at this point, but usually what happens is you say, oh, I'm doing a microflow where I need to do a calculation and I need a, a, a date time calculation and then you discover that it's here. So for example, to calculate the years between two dates, there's a function. There are functions for doing things with files if you're uploading them. There are functions that will uh, do various things that have to do with the technicalities of running the app. And then there are a bunch of functions that give you extra power over the database. This is an interesting one here. This is a function that lets you actually test whether an email address is entered correctly. And then we have a bunch of string functions for dealing with text, some of which are rather technical and we may not need. Um, but things like adding padding to a string, the length of the string, and, and the one that we'll look at here as a little demo is the ability to uh, generate a, a random password. So. Again, um, these are rather technical, but there are times when you may need one, so I thought it would be good to show it to you. So now that we have installed this, uh, let's go see how we could use it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my um, module demo page. I'm going to open that up. And we had in a previous screencast added a random password, which is just a string. And the, the reason I added it is just to show you that you could create a button that when clicked will generate a random password. Um, and so the way we do this is we need to add a button. So we'll go here and we'll do a call microflow button. And the microflow we're going to call is a new one. Be sure to put it under my first module. And it we'll call it generate password. Okay. And 
Oh, it's plural. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna actually change that to um, singular. Generate password. And if I look at my uh, microflow over on the left, I'm just gonna rename that to the singular. Okay, so we've got that. And now I'm gonna double click on that microflow. You'll see that we've been passed in the particular record, so we will be able to update the value of the password to be something random. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I could try and do that with some simple functions, but what's great is if I go under string utilities in the uh, community commons, you'll see a whole menu of new actions and functions that I can do, uh, including actually some tests, that's kind of cool. So the, a number of these are helpful if you're generating your own HTML or you're doing some really you know, in-depth uh, stuff, but random strong password is here, okay? The little uh, coffee cup means that it's a Java um, action, which is just a custom action here. So I drag this out here, and if I um, double click on it, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of things I need to fill in. So these are the parameters essentially to this function. So what's the minimum length of my password? I'll click edit and I'll say my password needs to be at least 12, okay? And now I'll say, what is the maximum length? I'll say it could be up to 20. And now I'll say, uh, what is the number of capitalized characters I want to include? So I want at least, so I want three capital letters. Um, I want three digits and I want three special characters. Uh, just for the record, by the way, probably not the most flexible password generator, but uh, worth it for us right now. So it's going to return a string, um, and we want to store that in a variable, and the variable we could call uh, something like new password. Okay, so now what will happen is we, we need to now update the password field in our module demo. So we're going to do change an object. That's what I dragged over. Double click. And for variable, we'll say um, the, the thing we want to change is the module demo, which is the, the form we're on. We, uh, we don't need to save it, but we do want to refresh it so that when we go back, we actually see the updated password. And here's what we want to change. We want to add a new thing to change. The thing we want to change is random password. And what we want to set it to is this variable we have called new password. So we're basically going to just replace whatever was there with a string. And that should do it. If we look at our error, it's probably that we need to allow people to click that button. So if I go here to security for my module, and I go to Microflow Access. We want to allow generate password to be run by anyone but a user who isn't logged in. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test this. So we're prompted to update the database. And this is probably related to, yes, it's our, our um, you can actually see the, the SQL. That's interesting. So we're going to update that. And now we're ready to run. So we, or rather to view, so we view and we need to log in. So we'll just use the demo admin role. And here's our demo, it's the star. And we can click generate password and there's a random password. We can keep generating them. So the point here is that there are a bunch of modules that add things. Community Commons adds a bunch of basically functions. And this is an example of how you might use one.